Thank you so much for tuning in to Learn Linux TV, your source for Linux-related fun and learning. I love producing Linux-related content for you, but I can't do it alone. If the content on this channel has been helpful to you, then please consider supporting Learn Linux TV. And one of the ways that you could do that is by becoming a patron, which will give you access to exclusive perks. Also, be sure to check out my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server 4th Edition. And while you're here, be sure to subscribe. New content is uploaded each and every week. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get started with today's video. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to my awesome Linux tools series, the series where I show you, well, what else would I show you in this series? I'm going to show you some awesome Linux tools. Specifically in this video, what I'm going to do is show you some examples with Nmap. And Nmap is actually one of my favorite utilities because it lets you do some network auditing on your network. You could do things like find out which hosts are up, which ports are open and things like that. There's all kinds of things that you can use Nmap for. Now, before we actually dive into the examples that I want to show you in this video, I want you to make sure that you actually have permission to run Nmap before you do so. For example, you might need to ask the network administrator if that person is not you, because running Nmap or something like Nmap might actually be against a work policy or possibly terms of service if you use a cloud provider. If nothing else, just make sure that you give someone the heads up and you should be fine. Anyway, I can't wait to show you guys some really cool examples with Nmap, so let's go ahead and dive right into it. First of all, we'll need to have Nmap installed if we haven't done so already. This process will differ depending on what your local operating system happens to be, but I will have links in the description down below to where you could download Nmap for your platform so that way you won't have to search for it. If you run Linux on your laptop or workstation, then all you have to do is install the Nmap package, and you could do that using your distribution's package manager. For example, on Debian as well as Ubuntu, we could run sudo apt install and then Nmap. So I'll press enter and then enter again to accept the defaults. And now it's installing. In fact, it's already done. Anyway, this is the command right here that I used on my Ubuntu system to install Nmap, and this command will also work on any other distribution that is based on Debian or Ubuntu. Now, if you're running something else like Fedora, for example, then you can simply change apt to DNF, and that'll help you get it installed on Fedora systems. And if you're using Arch Linux, then you can run pacman s nmap, just like that. But if you're running a different distribution of Linux, then all you should have to do is adjust this command accordingly and get nmap installed. And from that point forward, you'll have it at your disposal. Now, in order to confirm that we do have nmap available, what we could do is run nmap v, just like that. And if this works, it should actually give us the version number of the installed package for nmap. And as you can see in my case, I am currently running Nmap 7.8. Now, if you see an error message instead, that might mean that you don't have Nmap installed. Just make sure that you've run the installation command and you should be able to get the version which will confirm that Nmap is available. Anyway, now that we have Nmap installed, let's go ahead and check out some examples. And we're going to start with a very simple one. With this example, I'm going to use an IP address of an actual node that's on my network right now, specifically my TrueNAS server, and I'm going to perform a simple scan, which I could do by typing nmap and then giving it an IP address of the host that I wanted to scan. So what I'll do is type nmap, and then I'll type in the IP address. So we have the IP right here. So it's going to be interesting to see what the results are going to be once I run this, so let's do it. Now, what we have here is quite a bit of useful information that pertains to the host that I decided to scan. On the third line, we could actually see that Nmap was able to find the fully qualified domain name for that machine, which in my case is storage.home-network.io. It tells me that the host is up, which I would actually hope that's the case. If that particular server was not online, then I wouldn't be able to record this footage because that's actually where my raw footage is stored before I edit it. We also have a list of open ports on that server as well. I have quite a few here. So it might be in my best interest to audit this and ensure that each of these open ports should in fact be open. Anyway, I was able to show you a very simple example for Nmap. 
I used it to scan an individual host, as you can see here, and that worked out just fine. In addition to that, I can also use the host name or the domain name if I know what it is. So I'll just scan the same system again. And if this works, I should get the exact same output. Let's see what happens. And there you go. So what you could glean from this is that you can use the fully qualified domain name as well as the IP address depending on what information you have at your disposal. Let's go ahead and continue on from here. Another example that I'd like to show you is how the output differs when I activate verbose mode. And I could do that by adding the dash V option right here. So the command is otherwise exactly the same, but I wanna see some additional information here. So let's see how this output differs compared to the first two commands that I've run in this video. So I'll press enter. And with the dash V option, there was a lot more output. So you might want to experiment with the nmap command with and without the dash V option. Sometimes it might actually be useful for you to include the dash V option. Now here's another example. What I'm going to do is add the same IP address that I scanned, the first one that I scanned. So I'll type that in right here. But in addition to that, I'm going to include another IP address. So if this works, I should be able to get results from both of these IPs right here. So I'll press enter and let's see what happens. So as we can see, we have output from both of those IP addresses. So what that means is that if you want to scan more than one IP, then you could simply include each of the IPs that you want to scan with a space in between each. But that might not be exactly the best way to go about it if you have a bunch of hosts. I mean, I don't know about you, but I certainly wouldn't want to type a hundred different IP addresses one after another, especially considering that it's not only tedious, but I would probably make a mistake knowing me. So another thing that I want to make sure that you guys are aware of is that you could scan a range of IPs as well, and that's pretty easy to do. So what I want to do with this example is scan every IP that starts with dot two all the way up to dot six. And if this works, I should get output from five different hosts, of course, assuming five different hosts are actually online, but it's going to check five different IPs, dot two, dot three, dot four, dot five, as well as dot six. And that's a lot easier than typing out each of those IP addresses one by one. So let's go ahead and run it. So if I scroll through the output here, we can see additional machines on my network here. So it was actually able to scan more than one computer. It was able to scan via a range of IPs. And we were able to do that by running this command right here. But what if we want to actually exclude an IP from the results? Well, that's actually very easy. You could type dash dash exclude. And after that, you type the IP address of the node that you don't want to include in the results. So I'll randomly just pick an IP address that's within that range. And I'll exclude the node that ends in dot four. And I'll scroll up. If this works, it shouldn't show dot four. We have dot five right here. So the one above this one should then be dot three. And that's exactly what it is. It's skipped dot four. So with this command right here, we are actually able to exclude a host from the scan while still including a range for the scan. Now let's see another example. I'm going to run nmap yet again, and then I'll use dash lowercase s, uppercase v, and then I'll type a random IP address. Well, maybe not so random. I'll just use the same one again that I excluded last time, which was this one right here. And what this should actually do is allow me to view service and version information for the individual ports that are listed here. So let's press enter and see what happens. So as you can see right here, I have a list of ports, but I also have version information as well. And like you could see from the output, this particular instance is actually a Proxmox host. And speaking of Proxmox, if you weren't already aware of it, I have an entire tutorial series that's dedicated to Proxmox so definitely check that out if that's something that you wanted to learn. Anyway, with the dash lowercase s uppercase v option, you can see right here that I was able to get a lot more information, some very useful information about this particular instance. Now another option that I wanna show you guys is the dash a option. And this option should definitely give you a lot of helpful information. And I'll give it a different IP address this time around. Let's have a bit of fun. So I'll give it 10.10.10.21, a completely different subnet. Let's see what happens. 
And this is actually my Debian staging machine, basically a test machine when I want to test anything on Debian. I basically use this virtual machine to test my Ansible configs and things like that. But if I didn't already know which operating system it was running, then the information here would help me figure that out. Now, obviously, you should always know which operating systems you're running on your network, but if you potentially have a rogue device, basically an IP address that's on your network and you're not sure what it is, then this output can actually help you understand what that device is. The information here might just help you narrow that down. But as you can see, the dash A option is very useful, and we could use that in any situation where we want more information about a particular host. Now, so far, we've been scanning IPs one after another we did actually scan a range, but one thing I want to make sure that I show you guys is that you could scan an entire subnet if you wish. So to do that, I'll just type nmap, big surprise, and then 10.10.30.0, this is another one of my subnets, I'm going to do slash 24, and that's the subnet identifier, the CIDR if you will, and what this is going to do, if it works, is give me information for every host that it finds on this network. And there's actually quite a few devices on the subnet. Anyway, I'll press enter. And this might take a while. So what I'll do is just pause the recording and then I'll be right back as soon as the scan is done. All right, so as you can see, the scan is finished. And as it shows right here, I actually have 36 hosts on the subnet or at least 36 devices that Nmap was able to detect. So if I scroll up, I'll see some of that information up here, but you get the idea. I was able to scan an entire subnet. But another thing that I'd like to show you is that we could actually have more condensed output as well. So let's check out the option dash lowercase s uppercase p. And we have abbreviated information here. I think this variation of Nmap is actually very useful if you're doing some sort of auditing to find out which hosts are actually on your network in the first place. So if you wanted a more simpler list, then this is one way you could get that. But one issue here, though, is that the previous command that I showed you guys, this one right here, the one that we actually used to scan the entire subnet the first time, this one actually took quite a while to finish. But what if I told you that you could actually speed up the output? So what I'm going to do to show you guys the difference is I'm going to put time in front of the command, and that's a standard Linux command that you could put in front of any command to find out how long that command took to execute. So I'll press Enter. And yes, it's going to take a long time, so I'll be right back as soon as this is done. But with this variation, it'll actually tell you exactly how long this command took. Even though I'm going to edit this in post, you'll see the actual numbers. So it looks like the command finished. Even though on your end, it only took a few seconds for you to see the results, on my side, as you can see right here under the real heading, it actually took over five minutes, actually almost six minutes to complete. Now, let's see how we can actually condense this down and make this happen quicker. So this is the command right here that we ran last time. And what I'm going to do is add a new option, dash uppercase T and then the number five. So that's the option that I want to add. Let's run it and see what the difference is. And check this out. It only took about one minute, 18 seconds for this to finish. That's certainly a lot better than almost six minutes. I was able to shave a bunch of time off this command, and I was able to do that by including the dash uppercase T5 option, as you see here, but what exactly does that mean? Well, T5 is actually one of six timing templates for Nmap. You can actually use T0 all the way up to T5, and T5 is actually the fastest mode available. Now, when you use T5, it's possible that some accuracy might be lost, and also, with that option, Nmap assumes that your network is reasonably fast and can actually handle this mode. Most networks nowadays shouldn't have any problem with this, but you never know. But what about the other timing templates? I mentioned that you could use T0 all the way through T5, and that T5 is the fastest, but what's the difference between T0 through T4? Well, the first two timing templates, T0 and T1, those will actually slow down the scan and make it take even longer. So you might be wondering then, why would I want to make this take even longer? Well, the slower options are often used during auditing to see whether or not you could bypass the intrusion detection system if there is one. And the reason why that might actually work is that slower modes tend to fly under the radar. Now, when it comes to T3, that's the default, so you should never actually need to call that. If you don't use any of the T options, then T3 is pretty much what you're choosing. When it comes to T4 as well as T5, those are actually the fastest timing templates available. 
T4 is considered aggressive, and T5 is also known as insane mode. But again, you might actually lose some of the accuracy when you use one of the faster modes. So there you go. In this video, I showed you guys some examples with Nmap, so if you weren't already aware of this awesome utility, well, now you are. And the examples that I showed you in this video are not the only things that you could do with Nmap. There's all kinds of things that you could do with Nmap. So I actually will include some additional examples in the blog post that is going to be linked down below, so definitely check that out if you want to learn more. Anyway, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.